What's up, fellow lords of gaming, and welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Today we're gonna jump in with uh, <clears throat> our girl Nova <laughs> Nebula. Uh, like <laughs> she's probably got three tag titles. She's a Nova. Uh, she's a Nova core member. She's basically Yondu, and she's Nebula, right? So we're gonna jump in and discuss her character. Um, so let's talk about her. So anyways, let's jump inside here real quick and take a look at what I choose to look at is, you know, where she sits. Nebula is in a, the same place as she was previously, realistically, because instead of getting an upgrade to the T4, um, we basically just get a uniform for this character. I, I, I am not a fan of this. I've never been a fan of the way they've basically given some characters transcendence without giving them uniforms, which basically just it, it points towards the optimization of a character even more. So we're going to look at Nebula in terms of the overall character, and it's not a good place. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's not a good place. She still sat where she was. It's still somewhat the same thing because you have other tier uh, transcendence and tier three characters who sit above her and you have characters coming behind her who have more potentiality for them in the, anyways. So for instance, like She-Hulk sits very prone to probably more than likely get a tier four. I think that they announced that she's gonna get a season two uh, of the show. Um, then when you go down the list over here still, we still have America Chavez. Um, you know, she could, she's got her, you know, awakening, but she could potentially receive a tier four. Uh, you get uh, X-23, who more than likely is going to make an appearance inside of the Deadpool movie. I believe that there's rumor that the, um, I can't remember the female character that played her, the young lady, uh, but she's supposed to be making a return to the to, to to the movie so you're you're ending up there with possibility of her coming and she could she could conceivably receive a tier four alongside i doubt that's going to happen um just because like realistically there are other characters in that movie that probably will receive a tier four first um i don't necessarily think that we end up with a character like jewel um jessica jones basically coming in at tier four uh or you know basically any higher and i definitely don't see white tiger ever getting the nod again for anything in that shape form or way but the problem is that you just basically have characters um that are currently sitting in a better spot than her and you then have characters i even forgot crescent that characters that are probably above her in terms of where they could go i'm going to imagine for the life of me they have already t Ford luna they've already t for sharon rogers so your og characters for the game have already received t4s crescent is probably not long behind and they could potentially fill the slot that you know any void that's there between just these two characters alone and these two characters by argument are far more popular than any of the characters that are in the combat type female day so it's just not a good place for for nebula to be now i will say that i like the uniform look overall i think they put a lot of work into it and it looks it looks fantastic. I mean, you don't need to point to any more than the uniform, than the fuzziness inside of the neckline of her jacket to just know that it, it, it was a good uniform design and it was a good kick. I just would have liked to see them had tier four uh, Nebula at this point and just given her the tier four so that way she could have hit that new, 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 uh, new mile marker essentially. So my nebula is kitted out so she does have uh all her stats are maxed through something or another whether it's her character gears or not like you can see here i didn't really equip a whole lot of uru in terms of like putting them on her just because like realistically nebula is just a shadow lane clear character for me at this point um like realistically i think that's where she's gonna sit for a lot of people iso 8 she's got a power of angry hulk i don't have the artifact for nebula um i it it is a good artifact to be honest with you that they that they did introduce for her is not like the best but i'm also not a fan of the artifact system either so i've said that a number of times i haven't put any type of ctp on nebula so i just have an x obelisk for uh 180 proc inside there now if you were to go over and you were to look at what some of the people who are just equipping to nebula inside here it'll give you a better idea of like what you could be 
I have no intentions of giving Nebula a brilliant CTP of rage, a transcendence character getting a br most of these people are putting these like, you know, these type things so that way they could win the Witcher calls and they're just popping them on, popping them off. I have no desire whatsoever to equip these things to Nebula whatsoever. Um, realistically, I don't even see very much reason why I would equip uh, anything outside of an obelisk because I don't use her for anything but shadow land clears in the first place. Um, so giving her CTPs of rage and stuff like that, I just don't see it. Um, not unless I feel like the character is going to prove itself. So we'll see what it is because I haven't really play tested her quite a bit. Realistically, it's probably more first impression video than it is a actual like deep dive, but I've seen what she has to offer essentially. So let's, let's take a look. None of her skills really like pop off on the page on you. So I forgot to take a look at the uniform effect. Kind of important, right? So she does, like there was nothing here. The fire damage, the gra guarantee critical rate. You can look at the uniform options that she basically have inside here. And it, like these uniform options for her was ridiculous. So we get Groot, you didn't have Corvus Glive. Uh, you got Satana, the Marvel legacy version of this uniform. I'm not purchasing this uniform. Like who's purchasing this uniform? Um, and going back to that, I don't know who's doing that. We get Emma Frost from the Hellfire Gala uniform, which wasn't necessarily a bad uniform for Emma Frost, but yeah, I'm stick away from that one. Anyways, so let's go take a look at her skills overall inside there. Like you can say, you, you can see like fire damage just on there. Nothing really but fire damage on that one. Nothing but a recovery effect and silence on the third skill. Then we get a little frenzy buff on the fourth skill and then we get the fifth skill that just basically has you know all all attack increase and she still has her same you know uh her previous uh awakened skill that she had already in there anyway so let's take a look at the preview of the skills they did look really good um on paper i just don't feel like there's a whole lot there necessarily to yeah, yeah, we'll see what it is. I think she's probably going to be better than Win Wu, though, if I'm being perfectly honest. So we get a simple combo, 5, 3, and then 4, thank God, right? 5, quick cancel, and then there, same thing for 4. And she rips off some pretty decent hits overall. 77 hits on a target between the skills. Can't complain about that. 5, 3, 4. The thing is, is you're going to really need her to have that anti up for those um, and be able to do some damage on those. Next up, we get the skill. It's just going to be six, five, three, four. So six, five, three, and then four. She has very quick cancels on her skill. So she's going to be very easy to play and 115 hits overall. I forgot. So she ends up there. So overall, like the individual skills that they have for the character, they, you know, they're Yondu-esque. They don't look bad necessarily in any shape, form, or way. It's just how much is this character really going to be improving with this uniform overall so what i want to do is i want to take her into um the highest tier that i can which is for uh no so i'm going to take her into no um because i think or is it mephisto let me see hold on one second i think it might be mephisto i might have lied on that one so we'll go inside world boss and i think i have mephisto at no, 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 it's definitely no. Yep, 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 it's no, because it's female. That's the highest level that I basically have unlocked for, for, for no. So so let's take a look at her for for no and see what she can do. So I'm going to basically throw at her, give her the all allies from, um, you know, her near competitor, who's probably going to eclipse her at some point and give her the all damage to male types by 60, 65%. And then I'm going to equip her as well with the super villains, super faction uh, by 40, 45 from her. Realistically, when you look at Nebula, her leadership, I don't see like this is like a leadership that should have been changed at this point. All allies, when a combat type enters, they get the, you know, dodge rate increase buff, like whatever. And then you can see like her individual passive buffs there alone. You could have equipped maybe, you know, like Crescent as well inside of her. And obviously, you know, if we weren't just going for females inside of this uh, run, then we could have equipped obviously like, um, Nick Fury and stuff like that inside here, but that we would have been down at stage two. I want to start pushing the content that I'm producing for you guys a little bit. And by that, I mean, pushing myself, especially I go into free to play a little bit more, uh, to let you guys see what you can do. So I'm going to leave some of these up in here. Let's see. We can't use this because she's not an energy attack character. So that's not going to help her at 
all. Let's go with the ignore targets dodge rate. So we'll ignore the targets dodge rate. We'll get the increased basic damage uh, for attacking and for when being attacked from these characters. And we'll see how that looks, all right? So very simple combo, five, three, four. The really great part about this is that there is no delay cancels on the skills and you can basically rotate through the skills really easy. So immediately we're gonna be able to see the type of damage she's able to do with her six, five, three, four. I was expecting more damage than that, to be honest with you. It's not a whole lot of damage going on on our skill. Five, three, four. Yeah, she's gonna have, like if you're gonna end up playing with Nebula, I don't think a proc is gonna work. Five, three, four. Yeah. Five, three, four. She's, oh, she got caught up in that. I think if you're playing with Nebula, realistically, you're gonna have to put a CTP of Rage on her. Like, if you really want the damage to kick off on her, that's nice damage. She's getting about three bars, basically, on a full, on her full rotation. Five, three, four. There's just not a whole lot going on there for the five, three, four combo. Ooh. Oh, shit, I ran right into it. <laughs> five, three, four. Yeah, you you get in order to take advantage of her, like you're going to have to put a CTP of rage on her. Six, five, three, and four. Uh uh. Uh 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 uh. Five, three, and then we go four. Mm, like it's. I think she'll definitely perform better with a CTP of Rage, but it's like one of those questionable things like, do you want to put a CTP of Rage on her? Like, is she going to be usable to that extent to you? Let's see. I mean, it's a very simple, easy combo. It's just like, it's just not enough. Nice, that one, that one popped off. That was a nice pop off on that one. So there you go. So it took me about like, what is that? Two minute, two, two minutes to get him off his throne, basically. I wanna see if it can, like, let's see. Let's get him do his jump first, cause. Bastard. <laughs> that goes to show you though. Hey, fine, cool. She got literally stomped by one. So it, it belies the problem, right, with what we're essentially getting with the updates for these type of char for these characters where you just dump a uniform on them or you just dump a transcendence without a uniform on them. It just presents a problem because then you, we, the player, basically look at those characters and it's like there's not very much to be given there. And it points out to the larger scheme of the problem, which is the reason why they can't start dumping more T4s on us is because they're going to have to at some point basically come back to those characters and figure out the way to for us to obtain more T4 materials inside the game without having to spend money on them. And you get kind of worried because like, for instance, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was supposed to be the last ride for the Guardians of the Galaxy. So at what point do we get an opportunity to come back to Nebula again in the next you know year or two so that way the character maintains any form of relevance in terms of the time between where um, you essentially have the characters who are in that combat, you know, um, combat superhero role basically don't just eclipse her all outright. You have the potentiality for at least two characters um, uh, that are currently tier three to be tier four characters. And when you look at her kit overall, you're basically like looking at, you know, is she just a Shadowlands clear? clear? That's all I was ever really using her for. Um, with stun, she's got paralysis on one skill, silence on one skill, um, paralysis on two skills. Okay. So she got paralysis on two skills and she's got stun and she's got, uh, what was it? The paralysis? Just, yeah, paralysis. L silence on one skill. But are you going to be using this character over many of the characters in the pool to go inside Alliance Battle Extreme? I don't know. I don't think so. Like, like nothing about the character necessarily jumps out the page for me to say, 
it's a must have uniform or like, you know, I like the uniform just because it's going to be a very big upgrade regardless over the um, over her previous uniform. That's just the truth of the matter. It's just that is it going to be enough for the majority of players to be like, I want this uniform just because it's a it's going to be a big booster. She really just relegates a Shadowlands character like, and, and it is part and partial to the problem with the roster that they did here. A lot of these characters were safe bets in terms of like leveling up because you didn't have to worry about how it was going to be perceived to level up Hela. She was going to be popular regardless. When Ru at when Ru when Wu at the T3 was going to be a suitable adjustment because the blast type supervillain um, males isn't really like crowded with other potential blast type. I mean, she's basically in a field of her of her own with um, along with Jean Grey. So like they don't really have competition there and foreseeably you don't really find yourself worrying about whether Hela at T4 is going to you know hurt your account in any sort sort of way. And then Nebula basically comes here and it's a really safe upgrade because you basically throw a uniform in there and it's an upgrade for us. So nobody feels bad about it. And then you just basically lean in on like Kaori, the newest character being added, but she basically gets a potential transcendent with a with a passive ability that everybody's probably like, hmm. What you do about nothing? Like if it is any inclination to you, I haven't even leveled up uh, you know, Hella to tier four, despite my desire to because i'm really looking forward to seeing what the winner uniforms are going to be and how impactful they will be on the game and what tier four comes along with those winner uniforms so i think like we're in a really bit of a bad place in terms of this update a little bit in terms of like it's not a bad update in any shape or form or way but it's also not a good update it's just like meh like you know take it leave it whatever i would have loved absolutely loved and what i really would have loved and what i'm hoping they don't do is to see is to see Pe um <laughs> i want to see peggy come to the game i want to see like that's the character that they should have introduced um they should have introduced peggy to the game and peggy should have been like a character that should have been at the t3 level or maybe been the first character, like, I don't think we've had another character that's been introduced at a tier four. And I think that a lot of players would have like been enthusiastic about that because of the popularity of the actress and the act and the, and the character. So it would have been a really nice thing to basically see is like a nice little panache into the game where they just basically threw something at the wall and was like, hey guys, we're going to throw a freaking, you know, <laughs> a tier four character right in the mix. And it would have made sense too, because you already got Captain America and Sharon Rogers sitting at the tier four, um, if you know, or available at the tier four, introduce Peggy in there as, you know, Captain Britain right into the mix and just give her a tier four and be like, hey, you know you don't even necessarily need to make her like a native tier four like it, she didn't need to be a native character like that but you could have made her a tier three character the way we saw uh what they did with um omega red where you gave her the tier three on introduction and then gave her the tier four at the mid month and i think that would have been way more of a splash to the update and going out on the new year than it would have been for the update that we've received so far just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm enjoying bringing you guys this content uh, and I look forward to bringing it to you in a new year. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the, in the comment section below. Until next time, peace.